Hello, calculus class. Um, I'm going to give this a better version than the one I recorded last year just to have less um, background noises on this. So polar coordinates is something that we did a long time ago. Um, you may remember this back from pre-calc semester two. Um, and if you didn't, then you should have still done polar coordinates at some point. When looking at something like this, I tend to want to mark off different markings of maybe every four gives me one. So one, two, three, four um, gives me a radius of one. And then I'm going to travel around the circle and also put those markings there. If spending time to do that uh, seems a little bit like, why would you do it? Well, you're actually saving your time a little bit later because then you get a much greater visual for where everything is on the circle immediately. Those are my um, markings where I can now see that I've just kind of set a scale where there's, this is a radius of four, so it's actually a relatively tiny spot on the graph, but um, I can also put markings here, here, uh, here, and here to get a sense of where the 45 degrees are, and then here, here, and here to get a sense of where all the 90 degree markings are. Uh, and you can also go and subdivide if you want. Beyond that, you can see that this would be an angle of pi over four, this would be an angle of pi over six, this would be an angle of pi over three, um, and really every single major angle is actually a 12th, this is pi over 12, um, or 30 degrees if you want, and that gives us the entire circle. In rectangular coordinates, you have x, y ordered pairs. This is the rectangular version of that, and this is, in a way, expressing an ordered pair is doing a two-dimensional number, uh, or sorry, two one-dimensional numbers. If I wanted to move that into a two-dimensional number format, I would actually talk about them as a complex number, which is exactly the same thing, just done as a single number. Many of you remember graphing A plus BI, uh, where A is the real part and B is the imaginary part, but A really indicates left-right and B really indicates up-down. So that's rectangular form. Um, and the rectangular form for, for complex numbers is still that. Polar form, um, polar form is r comma theta, radius and angle. And that's the standard that we're going to use. That's the standard your book uses. Expressed as a complex number, it's r e to the theta i, where e and i are just put in there. And there's a little bit more explanation about why they have to be e and i. But uh, R and angle, radius and angle, um, also can be put into a single complex number like that. So let's kind of box that off to the side as just a little review of, of stuff you should have known. And also a review is the relationship between X and Y and R and theta. Uh, X is equal to R times the cosine of theta. Y is equal to R times the sine of theta. Um, and that's going one way. Going the other way uh, is a matter of just recalling that if I wanted to get radius from x and y, that radius squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. That, sets, that lets you get r. And angle theta um, comes from, well, the tangent of theta is equal to uh, y over x. So that can lead to the result of just r is equal to the uh, Pythagorean square root of x squared plus y squared, and theta is equal to the arctangent of y over x. Um, this just comes down to examples of how to convert from rectangular to polar and how to convert from polar to rectangular. I'm actually going to open your calculator up now so I can use it again in a little bit um, to remind you and show you a few things that we didn't discuss in your calculator um, from years and years ago. So if I want to convert from rectangular to polar, let's say that I have a rectangular point of negative 3, negative 4, and I want to go to polar. Um, well, I'm going to be changing that to r comma theta. So first figuring out r is just a matter of this being a 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean right triangle. That's easy. Uh, we know that 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared, so r is equal to 5. Then uh, the angle theta is, we don't actually know a good angle where the, uh, the height is 4 and the radius is 3, or sorry, not the radius, the x value is 3 and the radius is 5. 
Um, I don't know what angle that would be. I know that if I do the arctangent of four thirds, then I will get an angle, but it's gonna be the angle in quadrant one. This ordered pair is clearly in quadrant three. So since it's in quadrant three, I need to take this angle that would have been in quadrant one and shift it so that it appears in quadrant three. From a radian perspective, that means adding pi over two, the radian equivalent of 108, or sorry, pi, not pi over two, adding pi, the radian equivalent of um, 180 degrees. So my r comma theta as an exact value, not a rounded, but an exact, would be five comma arctangent of four thirds plus pi. And the, uh, uh, we also had these idea of co-terminal ones. I could also say that that's equal to a radius of negative five and the arctangent of four thirds. And this should make sense to you as to why this would be the same point. Um, if I have a radius of negative five, arctangent of negative four thirds is gonna be um, this angle here, but then a radius of negative five is gonna pop that all over into the other quadrant. Um, bring it out here at the same point that this would have been right up there. Um, so no one of these is better than the other. You just need to know that they're the same thing. Uh, we could go ahead and calculate where those are and verify that they're in the correct quadrants. But the one thing you actually do need to be really, really cognizant of is that when I go to the calculator and I type in um, the arctangent of, come on, give me arctangent the arctangent of four thirds that I'm in radians mode. Um, I need to be very, very careful about that because if I'm not, then it's gonna be a, an issue. Also, you can check that 0.92 um, is in the correct quadrant. 0.92 is a positive number. Um, pi over two is about 1.5, 1.6 something. So um, that's clearly in quadrant one and then adding pi to that means that it was going to pop up into quadrant three. So you can approximate this and you can even express it differently where we take this number and express it as, um, let's see, this was 4.07. So I could say that this is approximately 5e to the 4.07i. Um, and this would be the same ordered pair, but just expressed as a single complex number. This is called Euler's polar form, by the way. So in your calculator, I also want to show you that you have the ability to convert these coordinates as well. This is something that's not well understood until you're at the point where you are now. Um, so if I, in a calculator, want to take the rectangular coordinates of 2.1 comma 3.5 and convert them to polar, um, then what I can do is I can actually do this manually and kind of do the r is equal to radical 2.1 squared plus 3.5 squared. Um, and I could do theta is equal to the arctangent of 3.5 over 2.1. Um, figure out that that's actually the same as the arctangent of, you'll actually notice that that ratio is the same as 5 thirds, and that would give me about 1.03, and this gives me about 4.08. Uh, but there is a better way. And that way, if I go into the calculator, um, the actual calculation part, and I say I want to do 2.1 plus 3.5, and I want to bring up the i. Um, and it's going to tell me that, okay, it's, clearly you want a complex number, 2.1 plus 3.5i. Uh, but if I go to menu and go to, I believe, number, and I want to... This is going to be tricky again because I'm typing it on, this is in tablet mode, so be patient. Menu, number, um, be in number tools, no, ba -da -ba -da. give me one second to remember where this is. You probably are already ahead of me on this and trying to figure out where this occurs. Nope, nope. You hold. Oh, oh, I know. You don't go to menu number. You go to the settings. I'm just moving this to actually have a thing here. Go to document um, and change the settings on the document. 
And if I change the settings in the document to be um, the exponential form to not, or sorry, the uh, real or complex form, I want complex. Um, and I want the complex form to be polar. I'm gonna hit okay. So now I'm gonna go back to this number, grab it, and it's gonna change it to polar form. Uh, it moves the number after, it's still the same thing, but I think you can see that, that those are the same numbers. Uh, the 1.03 is the angle and the 4.08 is the uh, radius. So that's a way to go right ahead and, and you would put in A plus B I and then change it to polar form and it would pump it out into R E to the theta I. Uh, you can actually do the, the back, the uh, reverse again as well. You can go and put it into R E to the theta I, then change it to say, no, I want it in rectangular mode. And then that would be a nice conversion uh, between the two of them. So um, just keep that in mind that that's, that's an option. Okay. Um, let's go polar to rectangular. So if I have polar 7, comma, negative 2.18, uh, let's try this. So I'm going to do 7 times, I need to bring up E, and then raise to the negative 2.18. Um, if I just type enter, Forgot my I. That's why I would, did not do what I wanted it to do. I need to put times I up in the exponent. They can hide that. There we go. I'm going to put times, bring up an I, um, and press enter. It's going to leave it exactly like that until I go to the uh, document up here, settings, document settings and change this from complex, from polar form to rectangular complex form. Okay, go back up, grab this, press enter, and voila. Um, it shows me the x comma y. Um, this is negative 4.00. So we would say x, well, I wouldn't have to say that. I would say negative 4.00. Um, well, that'd be negative 4.01, so let's do it better than that negative 4.01 plus um, negative 5.74, so we'll make it minus 5.74i. Uh, and that corresponds to the ordered pair, negative 4.01, negative 5.74. Now, I'm not saying that it's terribly difficult, and it's certainly not just to do um, 7 cosine of negative 2.18, which would be this thing, and 7 sine of negative 2.18, uh, which would be this thing. But I think it's a neat little thing that you can do it in one step, or you can do it just by plugging it in your calculator. So um, that's, that's a tidbit. Now let's move on to some graphing problems, because this, this first section is just operating as a big review of graphing and converting between polar coordinates. But they, they set a lot of expectation on you with this review, like that you remember stuff from before. So just be, be wary of that, that you, you may need some massive review of how to do this. Um, we're going to start with an easy one, just a constant radius, r equals 3. Um, if you see r equals 3 as one of your, um, your things, just realize that's just a circle of radius 3. So in terms of graphing that, that can be incredibly easy. Um, it's just a place where I know that the r is 3 all over the place, and that's just this thingy. Um, converting it to rectangular means that we're going to go r squared is equal to 9, and I know r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and that gives you the rectangular form of the same thing. Now, that's constant radius. Let's move down to constant angle. Um, angle is equal to pi over 4. So we're going to kind of conceptually see what that looks like and then show you how to convert that to rectangular coordinates so you can see that it matches. Theta equals pi over 4, that is this angle right here. That's just that. But it also includes negative radii, so it may be this one down here. And clearly you can see that that's the equation of y equals x. Just realize that this is for positive radii, negative radii. Um, everything in here has an angle of pi over 4, 45 degrees. The way that you would do this um, to convert is you'd, make, you'd take the tangent of both sides. Tangent of theta is equal to the tangent of pi over 4. Tangent of thetas can be substituted with y over x. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and you get the equation y equals x, which matches what we just did. Let's do another few. 
um, let's go with a constant or a secant. If I have r is equal to the secant of theta, some of these are much, much easier if you actually graph them relative to, um, to something or by converting it to, uh, to, sorry, to rectangular coordinates. So r is equal to, secant is defined as r over x. And if I just cross product, I get x is equal to r over r. Um, or x is equal to 1. So as a graph, this is just going to look like a very boring graph. It will look like the equation of x equals 1. Um, that is constant, or that, that's just a secant graph, and we don't have to do it, but cosecant is going to be about the same thing. Um, you know, it's going to be a y equals, but in any case, let's move to ones that are just a tad bit more challenging. Um, so let's go with r is equal to 2 times the cosine of 3 theta. So for this, I'm going to go all the way back up, and I'm going to grab this uh, thing that I made up here, and we're going to use it down below. Um, I really, really, really had a whole set of polar graph paper in the corner of the classroom. So before this all hit, I was ready for you guys to, to do that, but I will be releasing polar graph paper to you um, in places that you can print. If you can't print, um, just do the best that you can with it. I recognize that we're all in a situation here, but um, it's much, much easier if you can have a chance to use polar graph paper. Um, and this is something that you can Google as well. Like if you wanna get a head start on it or find polar graph paper that works, I really don't care what version of this you use. It's like regular graph paper. Um, it's all the same idea. This is the one that's incredibly detailed. I like this because you can get a good sense for what's going on. So um, let's grab, um, let's do it. We're going to do this by t-charting for the first round. So theta. Then we're going to do 3 theta. Then we're going to do 2 times the cosine of 3 theta. Um, so here's my, my thought process on this. Uh, I start with three thetas that I know because I'm going to be taking the cosine of these things. So I don't want to be doing things that I don't know, uh, meaning I do not want to be taking the cosine of things that are somewhat difficult to actually perceive or do. Um, I know how to take the cosine of zero. I know how to take the cosine of pi over six. I know how to take the cosine of pi over four. Um, I know how to take the cosine of pi over 2. I know how to take the cosine of 3 pi over 4. And I know how to take the cosine of, um, well, let's, let's kind of stop there. So pi over 4, oh, sorry, I forgot pi over 3, and pi over 2. Now, backwards from this, to go from 3 theta to theta, that means these are divided by 3. So 0 pi over 18, um, pi over 12, pi over um, 9, and pi over 6. So here's the issue. I really won't be able to graph this one, this one, and this one. I will only be able to graph the pi over uh, 6. And continuing on with those, you can kind of anticipate a little bit that if I then graph 3 pi over 4, when I divide that by 3, that's going to be pi over 4. If I graph pi uh, here, this is going to be pi over 3. So let's get these down to, to kind of look at what, what these points are going to look like. The cosine of 0 is 0. This is going to give me 2. This is going to give me 0. This is going to give me negative root 2 um, because I'm taking the uh, cosine of pi over 4 times 2, so root 2 over 2 times 2, um, and let's see, oh, that's, sorry, positive root 2, and then the uh, cosine of pi, wait, is that right? I'm trying to say the cosine of, oh no, this is going to be negative root 2, and then the cosine of pi is just going to be times 2 is negative 2. Okay, on the graph, um, we're going to graph these. 0, 2 goes here. Then pi over 6, 0 is just an ordered pair here. Then pi over 4, negative 2, is an ordered pair 
that goes pi over four up, but then negative root two. Negative root two is about uh, negative 1.4. So I want to go, let's try to get this uh, right. So here's one right here. 0.4 would be, um, well, this is 0.25, so we're going to put 0.4 right there. And then the next one over, pi over 3, negative 2 is going to be right there. Um, and that's, I don't need that. So those are three points that it's, it's helpful to have an idea of what this graph looks like, uh, or four points. What basically what the graph's doing is it's bunching out, but as it gets closer and closer to pi over 6, it's being attracted and pulled back down to 0. Then it's going to kind of move out to this, and that's going to be a furthest point. Okay. This is the part that I want you to really, really think about. The symmetry means that it's going to continue in the pattern that it's been, meaning that it's going to be have a mirror point right here, and then it's going to slide back down to zero. So it's going to swing back down to zero before it hits that vertical. And then if I turn the page, turn my head a little bit um, to the other side, it's going to now pop out to a point over here meaning it's going to have these same 1.41 points on the either side of those. So it's going to go now out to here. Let's try to draw that. And then back again. And then finally, it's going to just mirror what it did up here, where I get a point, let's see, point coming out like that. And there should have been... Um, points that where we could have seen the uh, root 2 over 2. We just have a trouble plotting the angle a little bit, but um, I could have had a point at pi over 12, and I shouldn't have crossed that one out, because if I do graph the pi over 12, um, which I can graph on this graphing paper, pi over 12 would have given me a positive root 2. So that would have been a point right oh here, and then also right there. So this is a pretty good graph. I mean, I'm kind of proud of myself, just have to say that. It's called a rose curve. Um, and this is about as crazy as it gets. I mean, I, I gave you a three theta, which is difficult to do by hand. Rose curves look like this. R equals A cosine of N theta, or R equals A times the sine of N theta. And there are N petals. Each one of those is a petals when n is odd, but there are two n petals when n is even. So it's worth going and playing around in Desmos just a little bit to get a sense of this, um, just to get this in your brain that this is what it's going to start to look like. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. Um, I'm just going to graph r equals uh, a cosine of n theta and make those two be sliders. So A is easy. A is just kind of a magnitude. The bigger A gets, the further out it's going to be. Um, and oh, by the way, you can go and change your mode to polar mode. So you can actually see this with a little bit of more panache. But then as N increases, you can kind of look at what it's doing. So we really want to make our Ns be more staccato. So here's N is 3, the one we just graphed. N is 4. Now we have twice the number of petals. N is 5, we only have 5 petals. N is 6, we have 12 petals. You can kind of even see what happens when um, you have like values in between and how that affects it. But it's, it's just an interesting little kind of graph. Changing its cosine to sine doesn't change this too much. Let me bring this back down to 6. Actually, let's bring it back down to 5. And if I change this to sine, it just changes a little bit of how it starts. It's still a 5 petal object. Um, it's just that much like um, sine, sine starts at zero, whereas cosine starts at its maximum point away. So you can see that cosine starting furthest away. Um, I don't want to get into too many of the other graphings. I kind of want you to t-chart these and explore and see what these looks lo look like in conjunction with your graphing calculator. Um, you have graphed all these before. Um, at least you should have. I want to just give you some of the names that hit and some of the objects that you can expect. So uh, here's one of the objects that you can do. It's called a limaçon. Um, and, oh, I used to know what the name of that little swiggly C was underneath. Um, but Lima songs happen when you have um, 
R equals A plus or minus B cosine theta or R equals A plus or minus B sine theta. And they tend to look like um, little, little butts. They look like this. Um, or sometimes that subtraction means that it actually has like a, an inner loop um, that happens. So those can be like that. They can be very vertical. They can be things like um, sort of start, just kind of look like that. They're also kind of, sometimes they're called cardioids or, so there's another one. That's a terrible picture, but I think you get the idea. Um, some other shapes that also hit beyond those, and you can plug those in Desmos and get a look for what those look like, but you're going to be graphing these by T-chart, um, so just be mindful of that. Some other shapes are um, things that are called cir well, circles, you saw, things that are called circles. So you have circles, um, and here's a circle that's shifted off to the right. If you have R is equal to A cosine of theta, um, that circle is going to look like this. And you have R is equal to A sine of theta, um, that circle is going to look like this. And the uh, final one is called a lemnus gate. And lemnus gates come from things where, this, there, there's a couple of ways they can come about. Sometimes you see this R squared is equal to A squared sine of theta. They're not truly functions, but they can operate. And they look like hourglasses um, or infinity symbols, sort of shifted off a little bit. Um, I'll show you one of these, and just to show you how you might have to graph it in Desmos. Um, this would happen where, to graph in Desmos, you might have to just split it up into a plus or minus. So um, obviously, you can graph things like this by um, parametric mode, but we're not going to combine parametric with polar at the moment. Um, so if I have n theta, and it does not like the r squared, so I'm going to make this r equals a squared sine n, and we're going to make this a uh, square root of this whole thing. So let me sort of copy this in here, and we get that. And I'm going to make the second one where I just have r is equal to the negative version of that. So this is a lemnus gate. Um, you can see it here. If I start to increase the, uh, oops, increase the n value, you can get all sorts of different little things happening with that. Uh, let's make an n of 2, and there's the uh, the one I tried to draw. And obviously, if a is bigger, then I think you're just going to see this stretch inwards and outwards. Um, go n is 4. I can change the sine to a cosine, and it should just be a slight little shifting around um, of the two of them, so you can kind of see both of them. Sometimes the r the negative doesn't really matter. Um, for instance, if I turn off that, let's make this a cosine and then turn it on, it just overlays on top of the image itself. It traces the same exact image, so you can get a sense of if that's happening when you're t-charting. Um, when you're t-charting, you can use a calculator. Just keep in mind that a baby calculator is what they would have had when doing these, so that's all you should be using. All right, that's it.